So as co-chair for this year's Winter Enrichment Programme, you helped to choose the theme of personalised medicine. So why personalised medicine? Personalised medicine is a wave of the future, how to actually take medicine to the next stage. Over the years, we discovered that not a single solution fits all. You find some patients get uh, treated well with some um, medicines with certain dosages and some others don't. So this is something where technology and data would actually help improve the quality of uh, healthcare. Now, Professor Naveen Khashab, which is the chair of uh, this year, and I'm working with her in this field for the last 10 years at KAUST. Mm -hmm. uh, KAUST, in the last couple of months, uh, started a couple of new initiatives. One is machine learning and artificial intelligence. Uh, the other one was on smart health. And this seemed to be the last fit because it combines both areas. And at the same time, we launched the bioengineering department at KAUST. So if you look at all these pieces, they fit like a puzzle, and we all were excited about bringing this area to the audience here. People will learn how to actually do slightly better in the healthcare area, how to suit or how to tailor the drugs to the patient, how that each individual is unique and what works for you will not work for me and what is going on in the research right now in order to actually take advantage of this uniqueness in order to improve the quality of medicines we give to patients. And you're a professor of electrical engineering. So how does it? How does the theme relate to your specific area of expertise? So I'm a professor of electrical engineering. I started my PhD on DNA sequencing on a chip. So this was okay. like when the DNA sequencing was a big deal and it was like $15 million to do this. Nowadays, you can do that for $1,000. Wow. But that's how I started into the area of bioengineering, biomedical devices. And at the time, from a point of view of electrical engineering, this was like science fiction. I mean, we go to conferences and people are like, oh, well, this is useless. I mean, like, what are you talking about? But then fast forward, and this is becoming like a fact, how to actually develop sensors, which actually looks into certain biomarkers in your sweat, in your saliva, in your blood, to figure out that you might have certain uh, predisposition to certain type of diseases. That helps a lot with the uh, early detection of certain diseases. But at the same time, you could also con uh, use them to continuously monitoring your blood sugar all the time so that you can actually Accurate and accurately give you the right doses that you need from uh, for insulin for diabetic patients. So I work on sensors, and these sensors could be wearable sensors, could be implantable sensors, and these sensors you actually interact with your body in order to sense some some uh, biomarker or some kind of uh, uh, physical feature, and then we take an action, and the action is in the form of drug delivery. So oftentimes I work with chemists who actually develop certain drugs and figure out the mechanism of actually delivering them into your bloodstream while they need the information coming from our hardware. Recently we have been generating a lot of uh, data from our sensors, so this data most of the time it could be noise so you need actually to work with people from statistics and from um, artificial intelligence and computer science to actually sift through this data and figure out what's useful and what's not useful and this was only possible in the last few years with the advancement of big computers lots of processing power that you can do on the spot and uh, what, what's exciting you in, in that area at the moment I mean, there are so many things that are exciting me, but I think the most excited people are my students because each one of them is like, okay, come with, uh, every day was like, oh, I found this new application. This would be cool. Uh, one of the big things that we are looking into is not treating diseases, but in general, well-being. I yeah. mean, this is actually taking healthcare to the next level. We are interested in prevention, not in the curing, because on, on the long term, I mean, prevention is much, much more cost-effective. And it's also... Once you are have certain diseases or you are sick, it's actually not a good feeling. But if we can manage to prevent you from getting sick, I think that's actually what everyone, that's the goal for everyone. And so now we are looking into very, very early detection of certain types of cancers. I mean, we have been doing a good job treating cancers so far, but not good enough. I mean, like we haven't been able to actually uh, figure out a, a cure for cancer. Uh, but the general consensus, if you can detect them early on, mm -hmm. you can do a much, much better in the treatment. So we are looking into 
uh, certain types of cells that are circulating in your blood and which is commonly referred to as liquid biopsy and if we can detect these cells or these hormones in your blood maybe we can actually make some judgment about your um, you are going to be getting cancer or you have early stage cancer and then that will help a lot with the treatment we don't want to wait until we, it's confirmed that you have cancer and then you start the treatment sometimes it's okay sometimes it's actually too late yeah so so this is one of the big projects that i'm looking into right now another thing is looking into uh, bacteria in our water supply and there is a big push for right now for sustainability where we are recycling the water that we are using and not using fresh water they mm. call this gray water yeah. but the problem with that is that you really need to be continuously monitoring the water supply because you are doing and that requires a lot of sensors requires a lot of technology in order to figure out how much treatment do you need and whether it's actually treatment at the uh, plant or a treatment at the local play a house or a building that you're in wow so there's a, there's a lot going on and um, the thing with the winter enrichment program is it's it's enriching the students but obviously you're getting academic experts from around the world what have you found chairing sessions? Have you, have you learned things? Have you had your eyes opened about things? A lot. I mean, like this was one of the most interesting things because it's highly correlated and related to my field of research. So we had one of the speakers from UCLA and he actually showed that that was a simple second order algebraic equation. It's like so simple that you learn that at high school. You can actually predict which uh, the um, medicine you should be taking for cancer treatment and which dosage. And oftentimes uh, we would actually prescribe the highest dosage possible, mm -hmm. but that is uh, has lots of problems with toxicity. So now we can actually figure, uh, find out that using this equation, you can prescribe much lower dosage, but achieve the same level of treatment and efficiency that you could actually do. So this was an eye opener for me. Uh, tomorrow we are going to be having one of the uh, re highly related topics to my work which is vaccinations not through needles so they developed these patches with micro needles so you wouldn't even uh, feel these micro needles and you put your patch on your skin it continuously releases the drug in your blood stream stream and this kind of vaccination technology wasn't possible like 10 years ago and it actually has a huge impact because you don't have to use it for vaccination. You can actually use it for drug delivery. So oftentimes people who are actually diabetic, they have to take insulin shots. And yeah. some people are actually afraid of uh, shots. Some people, g I mean, get really annoyed with having them all the time while this patch will be there all the time, which means that you can actually continuously release insulin in your bloodstream. And that might be better than just a big spike in your insulin when you get the shot. So that's one of the things that I feel would open a door for new research for my uh, students where we can incorporate sensors with the patch to do what we call a closed feedback system. So the sensor detects the glucose in your blood or the sugar in your blood. And based on that, we give a signal to the patch and the patch releases the right amount at the right time rather than releasing it periodically with a prefixed amount. And um, the, the other beauty of uh, the Winter Enrichment Program is that we have... Saudi school children both on um, Kaos campus come in but also from wider afield and there's been some very exciting uh, sort of live lectures um, particularly for the kids um, so maybe we could talk a little bit about that but also was there something like that when you were a child that that sparked your interest in science or you already that way interested um i think i was interested in science because of my parents both of them did their phd so i was like growing up i want to do my phd like them so i think that's the early start also i'm kind of an old guy now so <laughs> when i grew up we didn't have internet that widely uh that wide there and if you have the internet right now you could actually see all these science shows everywhere i mean we were super excited and honored that we have one of our uh, guest lecturers who actually gave the best science show ever for the kids. I mean, like he made explosions on stage, he made volcanoes, he made colorful gases, and he actually used science to explain all of these experiments. So they got excited. Growing up, we didn't have that. Nowadays, even if you don't get a chance to see him face to face, you can actually watch him on YouTube. So that's actually something useful. Uh, at this uh, year, we actually have many things that I think are very good from uh, opening the eyes of students, uh, young and old, for science. One of them is a biofuturist. 
So she actually a PhD holder in synthetic biology, but she turned into science fiction writer. And she actually talks about how we can augment humans with capabilities that actually improve their quality of life and make them do some superhero type work. It's like bionic woman uh, era. She can actually swipe her hand and use that to pay with the credit card. So she has a credit card information in her head and she just swipes her hand over the machine and she can pay. So that's interesting. We also had um, a speaker from the London Science Museum. And you can see the excitement for the students because you, you see the early stage science and nowadays we can see where it is right now and you can see the development and how things went from the old days to the new days. So that's actually something I think uh, students will always and children will be excited about. So museums were a fun event. Uh, the science fiction was fun. And of course, science experiments on the stage were extremely fun. And it opens the eyes of students to what's possible. And that you don't have to be a geek. You don't have to be a nerd to do science. It's not a boring career. It actually could be a super fun. Great. I think that's a nice point to stop. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much. Thank you. Great.